Welcome to week 18 of Algebra 1 with Mrs. Weibark. This will be our final week of discussing polynomials. Today we'll be talking about multiplying polynomials by polynomials and special products. You can take notes using the handout provided in class or download it from our class Moodle page. We're first going to talk about multiplying a polynomial by a polynomial. In example one, we are going to multiply the binomial 4x plus 2 times the trinomial x squared minus 3x plus 6. In doing so, I'm first going to multiply 4x times the entire second polynomial, which is x squared minus 3x plus 6. I will then multiply 2, which is the second term of the first polynomial, by the entire second polynomial, giving me 2 times x squared minus 3x plus 6. My next step is to do the multiplying of the monomials by each trinomial, giving me 4x to the third for 4x times x squared. I then have 4x times negative 3x is negative 12x squared, and 4x times 6 is 24x. Moving on, I have 2 times x squared is 2x squared, 2 times negative 3x is negative 6x, and lastly, 2 times 6 is 12. I'm now going to group these terms by like terms. Negative 12x squared and 2x squared are like terms, so I have put them next to each other, and 24x and negative 6x are also like terms. I'll now combine the like terms. Negative 12x squared combines with 2x squared to give negative 10x squared. 24x minus 6x combines to be a positive 18x. So my final product is 4 x cubed minus 10x squared plus 18x plus 12. Looking up at the original example, you can see that what I did was 4x times the first term, then the second term, and then the third term of the second polynomial. I then took the 2 and multiplied it by each of the three terms, and that's how I got my final product. Please include this example on page 1 of your notes. The next method that we're going to take a look at is the box method. And in example 2, we will be multiplying 2x minus 5 times x squared minus 5x plus 4. So first thing we need to do is set up a box. I chose to make my box 3 columns wide, so I put the trinomial across the top, x squared minus 5x plus 4, and 2 rows tall so that I have 2x minus 5 on the side. I'll then multiply each set of terms. So 2x times x squared gives me 2x cubed. 2x times negative 5x is negative 10x squared. And 2x times 4 is a positive 8x. Moving to the next row, I have negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times negative 5x is a positive 25x, and 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So I've now completed the box. While it does take a moment to set the box up, it's very helpful for keeping lots of terms organized. I highly recommend this method. Now that I've completed the box, I'm going to combine like terms, and I have two sets of like terms. I have two terms with x squared and two terms with an x, so I will combine these for a final product of 2x to the third minus 15x squared plus 33x minus 20. And that completes our example of the box method. The first half of your note page should look like this when completed. If needed, please take a moment to catch up. We're now going to move on to special products. 
There are three types of situations which are worthy of having their own algebraic rule. The first is called the square of a sum. If I have x plus 3 in parentheses squared, what this really means is x plus 3 times itself. So I have x plus 3 times x plus 3. I can use any of the three methods we've learned, distributive, foil, or box, in order to find the product. I like the foil because frankly that's all they taught us in the 1980s and it has stuck in my head all these years. So I like to do first is x squared, outer is 3x, inner is another 3x, and last is 3 times 3 is 9. I have like terms here in the middle so I combine 3x and 3x and I get x squared plus 6x plus 9. If you were to do a number of these problems, you would begin to see that there is a pattern. So if I begin with the binomial a plus b in parentheses squared, I would notice that the product is always the first term squared, in this case a squared, plus the last term squared, in this case b squared, and my middle term is always a product of the two, a times b times two. So I will always get a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. Please take a moment to include this as example 3 in your notes. The next rule is similar. This is the square of a difference. Instead of adding two terms to form a binomial, I am subtracting, such as x minus 4 in parentheses squared. This is just another way to write x minus 4 times x minus 4. So if I were to use FOIL or distributive, I get x times x is x squared, x times negative 4 is negative 4x, negative 4 times x is also negative 4x, and negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. So my final product would be x squared minus 8x plus 16. Just like the last example, this too has a pattern. Anytime I have a binomial that is a difference, meaning the terms are subtracted, and the entire binomial is squared, the result will always be the first term squared plus the last term squared, and this time the middle term will be a times b times 2, but it will be subtracted. So I will always get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Take a moment and jot this down as example 4 in your notes. Our last example is also a special product, and this is called the product of a sum and a difference. Notice that the first terms are the same, both x, and the second terms are the same except for their sign. One binomial is a sum and the other binomial is a difference. So if I multiply these out, and I could use distributive or box, whichever method you like, x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x, 5 times x is 5x, and positive 5 times negative 5 is a negative 25. Notice that the middle terms are the same except for their sign. Therefore, they will cancel each other out. And my resulting product will be x squared minus 25. If you did several of these special product of a sum and difference problems, you would notice a pattern for this as well. The middle terms will always cancel. So anytime I have the pattern a plus b times a minus b, I can jump straight to the solution if I recall that the final product will be the first term squared minus the second term squared. Please include this as example 5 in your notes. 
While it's handy to know these special products rules, it does seem to add up to a lot of things to remember. So don't worry, you can use the special product rules if you remember them to save time. But if you don't remember these three rules, you can always resort to our very trusted distributive foil or box methods. If you do the problems using any of these three methods, you'll always get the correct answer. The special rules simply help you save time. And this is what the second half of your completed note page should look like. Please take a moment to catch up if needed. Thank you for watching this Wybark production.